Good morning, my very beautiful babes and babettes. I am your resident active advocate, and I neglected to mention the topic for today at the end of last day's video, but today I would like to begin in on a series called Politics of the Gays. Now, as you might be thinking, the gays is a visual thing that's not necessarily the case. The gaze, when applied to disability, and when applied to any kind of ism that we might have, either good or bad, there are good isms, but not too many, let's be honest. When applied to any ism, the gaze is both what you physically see, but also what you perceive about the perceived other. So people who are born blind, they can still be racist, they can still be ableist, they can still be homophobic, all these different kinds of mindsets that people can have, these are taught to us, and therefore they are, one might say, the worst kinds of disease. Do you remember how I talked about the continuum model and how we are capable of disabling ourselves through our negative prejudices and biases? This is basically that in action. The gaze is not always negative, but you will find as I go through these different models of the gaze that a lot of them are. So basically with the gaze, what you're getting at is how do you perceive this other person as different from yourself? Because the gaze itself implies difference. It is the I, the id, the ego, gazing at that which is other than itself. So when you get into the politics of the gaze, it can create that dichotomy that I've talked about in the past of self and other, but also of superior and inferior. One always believes themselves to be superior to other people if they are taught even from a very young age, especially from a very young age, that those people who are not us are inferior to us. And that is where the politics of the gaze comes in most prominently. The gaze itself is a tool through which we can be separated from one another and learn ostensibly to despise one another. Now, the word despise does not always mean to hate. It can mean to look down upon, and I believe that that is its primary meaning in terms of creating that dichotomy. That which is despised is always other than the self, and when this comes, though, to mental health, for people to despise themselves, there often has to be a divide between what one perceives themselves as versus what one wants to be perceived as, both by themselves and by other people. And that is a very evil way for other people to ingrain the superior-inferior dichotomy within brains that would not necessarily hold those views otherwise. These things have to be taught. And that's the most insidious thing about the gaze, that it can be taught to be used as a tool of setting up the superior and the inferior. And I believe that that is a bad thing to do in order to work together as a species, to grow more harmonious as a species, to evolve as a species. We have always needed to work together, to see one another as part of the group, and to work to further the interests of the group. Now, with math, with math communication, the group, theoretically, has grown much, much larger. You can talk to people who are on the other side of the world, and you don't even necessarily have to speak the same language. You can both use translation software, you know? So the supposed in-group has the potential to grow much larger, but the politics of the gaze often restricts who and what can be part of the in-group. And much of politics, much of religion, much of basically everything that separates us from one another 
is part of this politics of the gays. This is where discrimination begins. Because we are primarily visual creatures and because we teach other people to believe certain things based on vision, vision alone, that is where the problem can come in. Now, as I say, this can be applied to people born blind as well, because again, these things are taught. It's from the perspective of people who see, both literally and figuratively, others as different from and unequal to and inferior to themselves and to their in-group. So that is my introduction to this topic. Tomorrow, I will be talking to you about the wondrous gaze, which is the kind of gaze that says, you are beautiful and special and perfect because of your disability. That sounds positive, but you wait until we get there tomorrow because there are positive and negative aspects to this, and I will touch upon all of them. Thank you very much. I hope this didn't ramble on for too long, and I will see you tomorrow. Adios, my beautiful viewers. Mwah.